Okay. Us on housing, joining me right now is the co-founder of Home Depot. He is the founder and head of Invamed Associates, Ken Langone, joining me right now. Ken, it's great to see you. Welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for being here. How do you assess the housing market after Thanks that sharp having, number Maria. yesterday? I beg your pardon. Housing starts down 14.4 percent. We had a 75 basis point hike from the Fed. Was that the right move? And give us your assessment of the impact Absolutely. on housing. Actually, Maria, I would have felt better if the Fed had gone to 1 percent and been more aggressive really? about inflation, because, frankly, it's deep and it's wide. And we're not going to get out of this unless we get more aggressive with interest rates. I'm talking about hopefully... Uh, another 200, 300 basis points this year, which means I'm arguing for, uh, for uh, uh, 1% next month and 1% the money after that. We're not going to solve this problem in a soft landing. We're not going to do it. And, mm -hmm. and housing starts are the first example. Because when people yeah. buy a house, one thing they how much am I going to pay a month? What's my monthly charge? That's right. When you That's take right. rates up like that, those monthly charges change. But we're in a recession well, right now, in my opinion. You, it's okay, so you think we're in a recession right now, and you may very well be right. right. We had a contraction in the first quarter. Atlanta Fed's looking for zero growth in the second quarter. Ken, you knew that inflation was not transitory. All those months when we were hearing, it's temporary, it's not a big deal, it's transitory. You said, no, 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 no. I see what's happening, and this is far from transitory. What has been the impact, and do you worry that if we were to see real slamming on the brakes, which is what the Fed is doing, like you're talking about a 1% hike, that it's going to tip us even further into a recession. How does that play out, Ken? Well, I think it's a combination of factors, Maria. First of all, it's with the shortages we've had. It's with this insane energy policy. We're here. The president of the United States is going to go halfway around the world to beg to somebody who we say we don't respect the way they do things to help us out. Then on top of that, We've got all kinds of dislocations in the economy, shortages. I think it plays out one way, Maria. I think it plays out in a serious recession, uh, probably as bad as we had in 81 or 82. And, and wow. I think those of us that are investors, we want to structure ourselves in accordance. And so you want to watch balance sheets. You want to make sure you've got first-class management. Hopefully, you've got a nice dividend record, and you've got liquidity. But, but right now, Maria, everything I see indicates to me, as I said more than a year ago, it was not transitory. My surprise and my disappointment is the Fed. They certainly had more information than I did, and they should have been more sensitive to it. But the chairman of the Fed was saying himself, oh, no, this is transitory. It'll go away. <laughs> it hasn't yeah. gone away. It's yeah. gotten worse. And frankly, I think it can get even worse than it is right now. So, That's right. by the way, well, I'm an optimist over the long term. I think this is where you want to be in America, over the long term. But over the short term, we've got some serious challenges. And I think until we address those challenges, we're not going to solve our problems. Yeah, well, you're right. The Federal Reserve took us down this whole transitory road for over a year. Janet Yellen did the same thing, by the way. Treasury Secretary uh, said it was temporary. And now here we are. Freddie Mac shows the 30-year fixed-rate mortgage uh, has jumped to 5.78 percent, the highest level since 2008, and the largest weekly increase since 1987. Ken, you say we may very well be in a recession right now. How does one protect themselves? I mean, you've got to allocate capital regardless of the macro story. What are you doing to ensure that you're protected? And what should the business manager out there know, the investor average investor out there know uh, how to behave in times of recession? Well, first of all, make sure your own personal balance sheet's in order. I strongly urge people, this is no time to be leveraged. And so, number one, I would shy away from any borrow. Number two, I would have a significant cash reserve, not to invest, but to give me the freedom of not having to sell for monetary needs when the markets may be uh, uh, abnormally low. So to me, a conservative balance sheet, personal balance sheet, great companies with strong balance sheets, good managements, nice dividend record, 
or a promising future. I have some stocks I own, one of which is a company called uh, Optimum uh, uh, Hold. It's a uh, uh, healthcare home provider, home healthcare provider, doing very, very well, not paying a dividend, but growing very nicely with a very strong business model. So I, I, I'm not pulling my horns in, but on the other hand, I'm making damn certain that if there's gonna be a severe storm, I'm gonna be a survivor. And I think that's what all investors yep. should be doing right now. These are very treacherous times, Maria. Look, frankly, the lack of leadership in Washington is discouraging. For the president yeah. of the yeah, United really States, is. not once, not once, to say, I made a mistake or this is my fault, if you'll, if you'll look, every single thing that's happened negative, the devil may be do it or somebody else that did it. When is he going to show leadership, yeah. including belly up to the bar and say, this one's on me? Instead, they're pushing this climate agenda, Ken, and it's really permeating it's throughout every agency. As an investor, how do you get around this pressure to do ESG, ESG? I mean, the Securities and Exchange Commission investigates funds to find out exactly how many of, how much of the portfolio is ESG compliant. And you've got the SEC saying all companies have to follow rules. Look, that's political. That's not economic. We don't have the energy source to generate enough electricity for all the things we want to move from fossil fuel to, to, to electricity. We just don't have it. So, look, right. this will pass. This will pass. Put people in their homes where they can't heat them because they can't afford the oil. Trust me, they'll see the light. They'll say, hey, wait a minute, enough of this green stuff. What about our living now? Europe's going to confront this, yep. be confronted with this in, uh, in, in this winter because there's going to be severe shortages of energy in Europe. What are yeah. they going to do? It's, it's why some, well, you're right. It's why some lawmakers are expecting power outages. Uh, Ken, it's great to get your take on all of this. We so appreciate you. And I know long term, Maria, you're thanks very for having bullish me. on America. Yeah. I got great news. I became a grandfather again. A nice little girl named Rosie. So we're all excited in this whole. Ah! We're thrilled to death. Thank God. Oh, the my God is goodness. good. Have a great day, baby, Maria. Have a nice weekend. Baby Stay Rosie. Oh, congrats. Congratulations to you and Elaine and family on yeah. baby Precious Rosie. We're so happy for you, Ken. Thank you. Thanks for making my day with this great news. Thank you, sir. That's the greatest news of all. Thanks, Maria. Have a nice weekend. <laughs>